Good morning, everyone. May the Lord bless you as you listen to this message, because He loves you very much. My name is Doug Sloan, and today I'll be presenting this message titled, Let Your Light Shine. So why is this topic so important? I believe this is a timely message considering the world we live in today that's become a very dark place. Now more than ever, we need the light of Christ to shine brightly. Now, as I thought about today's message, I found this story of a man looking for a little help. The title of this story is Give Me a Push, and it goes like this. A man was in bed with his wife when he heard a knocking on the front door. He rolls over and looks at his clock and sees that it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm not getting out of bed at this time, he thinks, and goes back to sleep. Then a louder knock follows. Aren't you going to get up and answer that, says his wife. So he drags himself out of bed and goes downstairs. He opens the door and there's a man standing there. It didn't take the homeowner long to realize the man was drunk. Hi there, slurred the stranger. Can you give me a push? No, get lost. It's three o'clock in the morning and I was in bed, said the man, and he slams the door. He goes back up to bed and tells his wife what happened. Dave, that wasn't a very nice thing to do, she said. Remember that night we broke down in the pouring rain on the way to pick up the kids from the babysitter and you had to knock on that man's house to get help? What would have happened if he told us to get lost? But the guy was drunk, he said. It doesn't matter, says the wife. He needs our help, and it would be the Christian thing to help him. So the husband gets out of bed again, gets dressed, and goes downstairs. He opens the door, and not being able to see the stranger anywhere, he shouts, Hey, do you still need a push? And he hears a voice cry out, Yeah, please! So, still not being able to see the stranger, he shouts, Where are you? I'm over here, the stranger replies, on your swing. <laughs> okay. By giving this man a push on the swing, the owner was truly letting the light of Jesus shine, even in the darkness of night. And it seems like we're really living in darkness in these days. Yes, Crime and violent acts are rising. Vandalism and looting is the norm. And many state and local leaders are doing nothing to stop these actions. Mob mentality is leading us down a dangerous path. We are no longer civil towards each other. We've lost the ability to discuss differences of opinions. The current thought is, it's my way or look out. When I watch the nightly news, I wonder what's happening to our great nation. Apparently, the love of many is growing cold. Sound familiar? Yep, the Bible states that all of these things will come to pass at the end of the age. If we're not there yet, we're really close. Now, I understand that many Christians would love to simply withdraw from all the horrible things that are currently happening. But is this what we're supposed to do as Christians? Run and hide? Should we stay in some protected holy bubble and not venture out? While this may seem like a safe thing to do, it's not what we're called to do. We're not to flee the evil and corrupt world, but to live in it without compromise. People need to see the light that we possess, and we need to shine the love of Jesus before everyone around us. Listen to the words of Jesus as he prays for our protection here on earth. John chapter 17 verses 15 through 18 says, My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Yes, Jesus wants us to be in the world so that we can have an impact on those around us. So let's start our message today by reading the key verse for this topic found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, that says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people 
light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. As I examine the words of this passage, the main point is perfectly clear. We are a source of light for this dark world, and we must not hide it. Our faith in Jesus is likened to a lamp that is designed to provide light in a dark room so people can see. With this purpose in mind, let's now talk about how we should let our light shine. We'll start by answering the question, how does this light shine through us? First off, the light of Christ shines by reflecting off of us. When we have been in the presence of the Lord and our lives have been transformed, the Lord's glory can be seen by others. Remember Moses. He truly reflected the light or the glory of God. Exodus chapter 34 verses 29 through 33 says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the other Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commandments the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. These verses speak of the result of Moses being near God on Mount Sinai. The glory of the Lord was reflected off his face for all to see. I believe this principle still holds true today. As we draw closer to Christ, our personal relationship with him radically changes our behavior. Then people can see the effects as we do good deeds, which are the results of our life-changing faith. Now understand this. Scripture clearly says that Jesus is the light of the world. But now he calls us to be the light of the world for this generation. Okay, Darkness is scary, and it causes much fear and anxiety. But when light comes into a dark place, it brings peace and comfort. You can see the path, and you can move around safely. People need the light to see to take away this fear. So let me share a personal story with you about darkness and light. Early on in my Air Force career, my first assignment was a base in Tucson, Arizona, which is in the Sonora Desert. This was a huge change for me. I was raised in Mississippi with green grass and lots of trees. However, Arizona had rocks, sand, cactus, and tumbleweeds, along with several mountains and caves. One weekend, I decided to do some sightseeing and explored a nearby town used in many of the old Western movies. One of the highlights of this place was a group of deep caves. I'd never been in a cave before, so I signed up for the next tour. There was about 15 people in this tour group, and we were led into a deep, dark cave that had electric lights strung along the walls. When we arrived at a large underground opening, the tour guide told us that we were so deep that there was absolutely no outside light at all. To demonstrate this, she turned off the light switch, which plunged us into total darkness. Fear instantly came over everyone, and I heard a high-pitched scream like a little girl that added to our anxiety. Well, at that time I was a smoker, so I reached into my pocket, grabbed my cigarette lighter, and lit the fire. Instantly, we could all see everything, and I stopped screaming. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> you know, that small cigarette lighter lit up the entire cave. We could all see the narrow path and where to walk safely. What a comfort that little light gave. As I think back on this event, I realize how the light of Christ helps those who are walking in darkness. They can't see the narrow path. They don't know where the dangers are. And there is fear of the unknown. Then we come along and show the light of Christ that can safely guide people through all the dangers. Wow. Praise the Lord. Okay, now that we see the benefits of light in a dark place, let's discuss what good deeds are and how to let them shine. 
Here are some ideas that came to mind as I pondered these questions. So, what would be considered good deeds? I suppose this would include things like helping others in need, standing up for the weak, doing what is right, providing for the less fortunate, comforting those who are sad, praying for the sick, and those in trouble. This list could go on forever. But good deeds probably includes any action that would fall under the what would Jesus do concept. All of these types of good deeds act as a light. They help people to see the incredible love of Jesus. But remember this, we don't do good deeds for our glory. It's all for the glory of the Lord. Okay, next question. How can we let these shine? I believe that we can shine in two ways. First, by showing our commitment to Christ, and second, by demonstrating Christ-like behavior. So let's take a quick look at each, starting with showing our commitment. We can do this by standing firm in our beliefs, know what the Bible says, and make a stand for the truth. We can also show our commitment by letting people know that we're Christians. We don't have to make an announcement each time we meet someone, but we can do several other things to make our faith known. For example, some people wear a cross or other Christian symbols to show their commitment to Jesus. We can also talk about church services or special church events like plays, picnics, mission trips, etc. Or we can discuss a Bible study we recently attended or lessons that we learned in a group study. I like to think of these actions as going fishing. (laughs) Yep, when we throw out these words, it's like casting a line out when fishing. Then we wait to see if anyone takes the bait. Christians, along with many who would be interested in Jesus, will draw near to hear more. All of these things are easy ways to start a conversation about Christ as our light shines. Finally, We can show our commitment to Jesus by confessing our faith and not being ashamed. This is very important. Mark chapter 8 verse 38 says, If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Wow, I wouldn't want to be on the wrong end of that. The second way of letting our light shine is by demonstrating Christ-like behavior, which would include being kind and compassionate to others, even if they don't deserve it, or being forgiving. Don't hold a grudge. Let it go and find peace. Remember, forgive and you will be forgiven. Another way is to ask for forgiveness, and this is powerful. It's as simple as saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Don't make excuses for bad behavior, just apologize. Next, be honest. Speak the truth always. Early on in my walk, I struggled with this, and I had a bad habit of lying, and I even asked God if it were actually possible to always tell the truth. Then the Lord gave me this profound thought. Don't do things you would have to lie about. Wow, what wisdom! I'd never thought of that. (laughs) Finally, walk the talk. Non-believers really want to see someone live out their faith, not just lip service. They often say, don't tell me about your faith, show me. Then when we do walk the talk, this saying comes to mind. Your actions speak so loud I can't hear a word you're saying. Man, this is so powerful and true. In doing all of these things, we will indeed shine the light of Christ. Now, when people see the light we have, they really need to know that this behavior is a result of our Christian faith. Let me tell you another story that applies to this principle. About 15 years into my Air Force career, I was stationed in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. There I made friends with a very nice fellow named Al. This man was rock solid. He was upright and lived a clean life. He didn't drink, smoke, cuss, gamble, or have any vices that I could tell. 
He was also well-tempered and known as a peacemaker. Over the next few years, we became very close friends, and I was sad when I had to move to my next assignment at a major command headquarters in Illinois. That's when I became a Christian, and the joy of my salvation was so strong that I wanted to tell everybody about the forgiveness that we can have through Jesus. A few years later, when I was about to retire from the military, I asked Al to be my replacement at headquarters. He accepted the offer, and when he and his wife moved to Illinois, I was eager to see them again so I could tell them of my conversion and try to lead them to Christ. One evening, they invited me over for dinner. We had a wonderful time together catching up. Then I began to tell them of my conversion and how I had given my life to Christ and how I wanted them to know the Lord too. They listened politely, then smiled and told me that they too were Christians. I almost fell out of my chair. While I was pleased to learn this, I was also very puzzled. After all these years, why hadn't they mentioned anything about their faith? I would have never guessed they were Christians. I just thought they were good people. So here's why I'm telling you this story. I often hear people say their form of sharing the gospel is just living a good life and waiting for someone to ask them what makes them different. But I'll be honest with you. If people don't know that you're a Christian, that will rarely ever happen. But if people see your faith in Jesus that produces action, or they see joy or hope in your heart, they will ask. So to let our light shine, we need to be prepared to share our faith. Let's look at what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15b through 16, that says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. This is a simple method of sharing our faith with others. While non-believers can argue about the Bible or some specific theological view or interpretation, they can never argue with a personal testimony. So we must be prepared to share. If we're not ready, we could miss a God-given opportunity. Now please bear with me as I share one last personal story about how I missed a very important opportunity. One day here in Salem, Oregon, I stopped by a store to buy a snack. While waiting in line, I was singing praise songs to the Lord in my head, and I was experiencing great joy in my heart. I'm sure my head was bobbing, and I had a big smile on my face. When I got up to the counter, the young girl working there had a puzzled expression on her face as she looked at me. She was wearing dark clothes with black makeup, and she looked sad or a little depressed. Then she told me that she had noticed me singing and smiling. In fact, she said, I look like the happiest guy in the world. After a short pause, she asked me point blank, why are you so happy? Wow, I was dumbfounded. It was as if she was truly looking for an answer. But I didn't know what to say. I didn't think I could tell her about my joy in the Lord because that might take too long. And there was a line behind me. So I said, I don't know, I'm just in a good mood. Then I bought my things and left. As I was driving off, I felt bad. Why didn't I tell her about my faith in Jesus that gave me joy? For the next few days, this nagging question kept coming to mind. So I decided to go back to that store and tell that young girl the real reason for my joy. And that's because I had come to faith in Jesus. When I went into the store, I didn't see her, so I asked the man working there if that young lady would be coming in to work that day. The man looked up at me with a sad face and told me that she was dead. Someone came into the store over the weekend, took all the money, and forced her into the freezer and killed her. My mind was reeling. I may have been her last chance to hear about the love of Jesus before she died, and I didn't even open my mouth. And why? 
because I wasn't prepared to share the reason for my joy. I've often prayed that God sent someone after me that was prepared to share the good news with that poor girl. As a result of my missed opportunity, I've made a commitment to be prepared to share at a moment's notice. So here's a tip on how all of us can be prepared. Write down a short statement of your faith. Tell how you used to live and how Jesus changed your life. Then practice that speech until it becomes second nature. That way, when the time comes, with a smile on your face, you can share your faith without hesitation. God will surely use your words. Okay, I'd like to end today's message on a more encouraging note with a reading from a powerful daily devotional. The day before I wrote this original message, my wife decided to read this devotional to the family while driving home from a long road trip. What a perfect message for this topic. And it reads, Jesus is the light of the world. Men crawl through their lives cursing the darkness, but all the while Jesus is shining brightly. The Lord desires each of his followers to be a light bearer. The Holy Spirit who lives in you can shine from your face, making Jesus visible to people around you. Ask his spirit to live through you as you wind your way through this day. Hold the Lord's hand in joyful trust, for he will never leave your side. The light of the Lord's presence is shining upon you. Brighten up the world by reflecting on who he is. Wow! This was a timely devotional, and it speaks to the heart of this matter. May we ponder these thoughts and let our light shine. Now that we've talked all about letting our light shine, let's close in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for one more opportunity to share this message with my beloved brothers and sisters. We also thank you for always forgiving our sins and never holding them against us. Let others see the light that we possess through our good deeds as a result of our commitment to you. Give us many opportunities to help others and to share our faith in you. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you live through us as we go through life so people can clearly see the love of Jesus. Help us be the light of the world and reflect your glory until you come to take us home. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen.